Well, thank you, uh, Angela, for that um, introduction. And uh, it is certainly an honor to uh, uh, receive this award from the society. I have to admit that when I uh, looked at the list of Bierman Award winners, um, I didn't really think that I was in that category of scientific greats. So, um, uh, Angela's story is true. Uh, it did cause a little uh, family trouble. My brother is a real doctor. He's a practicing gastroenterologist in the Washington area, and uh, 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 this uh, set me a little bit higher than, than he did uh, in his career. Uh, so, um, I'd like to sort of um, there we go. I do work for Bristol Myers Squibb. A little bit of the history and some of the science uh, behind uh, checkpoint blockade. And um, in 2007, this meta-analysis of, of trials of 2,000 patients uh, from uh, about 25 different trials in metastatic melanoma phase two trials um, that uh, were from 1975 to uh, 2005 gave this very sobering picture of, of overall survival uh, in metastatic melanoma, uh, six months and one year of 25%. Um, Recently, there was an update of, of a 1,000 patient trial that compared uh, ipilimumab in green, uh, anti-PD-1 nivolumab in blue, and its combination uh, in metastatic melanoma. And you could see uh, this dramatic uh, progression-free survival that's clearly uh, uh, improved by um, the combination, however, um, you know, these do come with side effects, which I'll address shortly. That overall survival uh, also showed dramatic uh, changes in uh, long-term survival, uh, uh, certainly improved uh, by nivolumab, anti-PD-1, and uh, we were hoping for a better signal with the combination. But again, there are uh, clearly very important complete responses that occur with that combination. So, so how did we get to this um, uh, point? So this is a, a reproduction of an experiment uh, that uh, Jim Allison performed, the seminal uh, treatment of mouse, uh, in this case fibrosarcoma, with anti-CTLA-4. And you can see on the left that in, in this highly immunogenic model, you see uh, that uh, treatment with anti-CTLA-4 uh, causes the regression of those tumors. On the right is an experiment that um, actually Jim never performed, but a disbelieving uh, head of uh, oncology development at Nexstar asked us to really prove that this had something to do with the immune system. I suggested uh, a bet on this, but uh, uh, they didn't take me up on that bet. So uh, clearly the immune system is involved in this um, anti-tumor response. But CTLA-4 blockade in most mouse models doesn't really uh, uh, work very efficiently. Uh, it usually needs to be combined with other agents uh, or you can treat early when the tumor burden is, uh, is low. So. Um, what we know about CTLA-4 is that it recognizes the B7 molecules subsequent to uh, TCR signaling and co-stimulation uh, through CD28. Uh, CTLA-4, which also binds to the B7 molecules, is an inhibitor of that T cell function. And we began by making antibodies to CTLA-4. Uh, but as I'll show you later, uh, while this priming function of CTLA-4 is certainly true, we actually think that CTLA-4 functions at the tumor site and not necessarily in the draining lymph node. So um, what Jim and others had shown was that uh, CTLA-4 
could be lethal uh, when you knock it out in mice. And later on, it was shown that uh, that lethality could also be reproduced when you uh, knock CTLA-4 out in T regulatory cells only. So we now recognize that CTLA-4 has important functions both in effector conventional T cells as well as in regulatory cells. But interestingly, while we were uh, concerned about this lethality, you don't really see any adverse events in mice nor in cinnamolgus macaques, even upon high level dosing of um, anti-CTLA-4. So we now uh, understand the recognition of, um, of, of ipilimumab to CTLA-4 through the work of Steve Almo's group. Uh, here you can see that uh, CTLA-4 shares uh, a site uh, for B7 uh, binding uh, that has this uh, sequence and B7 molecules bind to that and ipilimumab blocks that. And what's important about uh, anti-CTLA-4 is that um, it has to recognize CTLA-4, but it can recognize CD28, otherwise it would abrogate the anti-tumor response. And here you could see the specificity for CTLA-4 over CD28 because uh, in CD28 there's a residue that points downward that prevents uh, binding to CD28. So in the pivotal trial for uh, anti-CTLA-4, uh, IPI was compared against GP100 peptides and this now iconic uh, uh, picture emerged in which there was a change in median overall survival, but importantly, the, the tail on the curve, which led to a 20% response rate, uh, long-term survival, and uh, that has been borne out in a uh, large number of patients and with some responses lasting uh, close to 10 years. But this came with uh, the recognition that there were certain novel adverse events that the clinicians uh, documented. Uh, in particular, uh, diarrhea and colitis uh, were, were found uh, of interest to this group. Uh, rashes and pruritus were at a pretty high frequency. And some very novel effects like hypophysitis uh, loss of uh, pituitary hormones. And what we uh, now understand about these, although uh, some of that knowledge of these adverse events is rudimentary, is that these are inflammatory in nature. It's not clear whether they're uh, reactive uh, to specific antigens at this time. Um, again, they can be quite serious, certainly can be even uh, enhanced by the combination. But they can uh, be treated uh, by withholding drug, uh, giving steroids. Steroids don't seem to abrogate the anti-tumor response. And, and in some serious cases, you can give anti-TNFs. So uh, we became interested in understanding how CTLA-4 function. And this, uh, for this, we have to understand uh, mouse FC receptors in the mouse models. FC receptors bind immunoglobulin, different isotypes. They're activating and inhibitory receptors. And uh, these are expressed on a number of different cell types. So a number of years ago, we uh, did this set of experiments where we manipulated the FC region of anti-CTLA-4. And what we were able to observe uh, were two uh, remarkable findings, I think. Number one, uh, this was the antibody that we had been using that has partial binding to FC receptors. And if we converted it to an isotype which binds well to FC receptors in the mouse, IgG2A, you now see that all the mice are cured of their tumors. Interestingly, uh, if you convert it to a non-FC binding, CTLA-4 blockade, because each of these antibodies can block CTLA-4, actually has no anti-tumor activity. So, in a sense, checkpoint blockade of CTLA-4 
if you had used the wrong antibody, uh, is actually not effective in anti-tumor responses. We now understand uh, how this functions. In mice, each of those antibodies can stimulate uh, Treg proliferation in the periphery. However, at the tumor site where uh, Tregs are highly activated, the different isotype antibodies cause a differential depletion of those T regulatory cells, in addition to CTLA-4 blockade, which activates 4s and 8s, leading to an increased uh, T effector to T reg ratio, which is favorable. And this occurs because uh, at the tumor site, T regs are the only cells that express cell surface CTLA-4 in a manner in which uh, those cells can be depleted. And this is also true uh, in, in man. These are uh, punch biopsies from melanoma from Adil Dowd and Mike Rosenblum at UCSF. And you can see that this expression of CTLA-4, though this is intracellular expression, also uh, recapitulates what's seen in the mouse. So this phenomenon uh, is actually quite uh, prevalent for many of the other targets that uh, we work on, co-stimulators and negative regulators. I'll go through this fairly quickly here, but uh, what you can see here is that many of these molecules are highly expressed on, on Tregs. Those are uh, the arrows in blue. And this is also observed in human till. Here is a, a selection of uh, till analyses in which many of these molecules uh, blocked in the red are also highly expressed on Tregs. And if you compare isotypes that are depleting for all these different uh, 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 antibodies against these different targets, what you can observe is that uh, many of them are quite good, such as CTLA-4, GITR, and OX40. Some are quite modest, and some, uh, like anti-PD-1 as a 2A, doesn't work at all. And this is due to this differential depletion of Tregs. You can see that for each of the molecules except for PD-1. And this causes differential activation of each of the different uh, kinds of subsets that we've looked at with these different antibodies, indicating that you know, many of these can uh, potentially serve as uh, next generation anti-tumor uh, antibodies. So in 2001, uh, once uh, ipilimumab had entered uh, clinical development, we turned our attention to another negative regulator uh, that was studied by uh, uh, Hanjo and collaborators, and that's uh, PD-1. And PD-1 uh, was studied in knockout mice where it doesn't have quite the lethal phenotype that um, CTLA-4 does. However, uh, it was known as a negative regulator. Uh, it's highly expressed by uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Uh, and as I'll discuss later, important work from the chronic virus infection field uh, shown that uh, PD-1 is a marker of these non-responsive or exhausted T cells. And it became clear that PD-L1 was frequently expressed by tumors through a mechanism uh, called adaptive resistance, where interferon gamma produced by T cells upregulates uh, PD-1. So we made a pair of blocking antibodies to both uh, PD-1 and PD-L1, which don't bind FC receptors. And uh, very quickly, it became clear that uh, uh, anti-PD-1 and PD-L1 had very a good uh, clinical activity in a large number of tumor types. It had a superior adverse event profile and has certainly eclipsed uh, ipilimumab in uh, first-line um, uh, melanoma along with other uh, PD-1 antibodies that are in the clinic. Uh, here uh, I show one example 
that I think uh, using pembrolizumab, uh, the Merck compound, in which one can observe that in colorectal cancer, which previously had been shown to be non-responsive to anti-PD-1, in the mismatch repair uh, deficient uh, colorectal cancer, you see good anti-tumor responses, while the mismatch repair proficient uh, have no responses. And this led to the idea that uh, the increased number of tumors, the ability to create neoantigens and rec be, that could be recognized by the immune system uh, was an important component of the anti-tumor response. And further studies looking at tumor mutational burden now show that that's an important component uh, in the anti-tumor response. Uh, Long-term survival of those first uh, Patients that were treated with PD-1 do show uh, a reasonable tail on the curve. This is in uh, second-line lung cancer, and um, uh, we look forward to longer-term data from a number of different trials and indications for uh, PD-1 and other PD-1, uh, PD-L1 antibodies in terms of uh, long-term survival. So. Uh, did we make the right antibody for PD-1 when we performed the same um, uh, game as we did for CTLA-4? Uh, as I alluded to earlier, we did show that the right antibody are blocking antibodies, and antibodies that bind FC are not uh, the antibodies of choice for um, for PD-1. So we think that here we, there is no, uh, little opportunity to improve uh, the activity of PD-1. Uh, here you can see that uh, the, the right antibodies activate CD8 responses, the wrong antibodies deplete them, uh, and there's little effect on CD4 and Tregs in the mouse uh, tumor models. So in 2005, we did the following experiment, knowing that PD-1 and CTLA-4 uh, uh, were different signaling pathways, we combined them. Again, this is using the older uh, CTLA-4 antibody that has modest activity. But here you could see that the combination gave good anti-tumor activity, and that led to the first patient uh, being treated in 2009 in that study I showed earlier. Uh, what we now know about how this works is that uh, this combination gives you enhanced potency of those T cells, as shown by polyfunctional uh, production of cytokines, both at the tumor site and in the periphery. Uh, that, together with the reduction of CD uh, uh, CD4 positive Fox P3 uh, T cells mediated by anti CTLA4 here in that combination here again with the the better isotype antibody and when we looked at um, tumor specific uh, T cells which we can do in the CT26 model these uh, T cells are highly present at the tumor site and they recognize a viral antigen that's expressed by CT26. You can see that those tetramer positive cells are rich in PD-1 and CTLA-4. And these types of cells have also been suggested to be important in responders versus non-responders in work from Adil Dowd. More recent work uh, has defined a PD-1 CTLA-4 positive cell that may also be in the periphery that becomes KI-67 positive in response to anti-PD-1. So again, we, in the mouse, we think that these antibodies work by a number of different mechanisms, co-blockade of uh, CD-4 and CD-8 effector functions, but Treg depletion at the tumor site uh, we've shown that PDL1 is very important on the tumor, but can also be important in the host. So non-tumor bearing uh, cells that bear PDL1 could also be suppressive. And again, we think there's a uh, dual blockade in the same cell, 
uh, for these double positives. Uh, sadly, we actually don't know whether anti-CTLA-4 ipilimumab depletes Tregs in man, and that's the work of, uh, of ongoing uh, activity in translational uh, research, but I'll also uh, allude to this uh, difference in Treg depletion for the potential for uh, next generation CTLA-4 antibodies in man. Um, I did want to mention uh, one interesting patient story that comes from uh, Mario Schnoll. This was a patient that was treated, one of the first patients treated in the ipi nevo combo. And after a single dose, uh, she developed a grade three uveitis, which is not rare, but somewhat, uh, uh, somewhat uncommon. And despite receiving only a single dose, attained a complete uh, response uh, when the first scans came in at 12 weeks. Here were two uh, lesions of a mucosal melanoma. Uh, the patient relapsed two and a half years later uh, with a gastric mass, and uh, the clinicians were very uh, concerned that uh, uveitis would reoccur upon retreatment. But the patient was willing to get the combo again and responded to that uh, 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 gastric mass and is now tumor free. Uh, so this, I think, is a great testimony to the, the existence of a pre-existing anti-tumor response that was unleashed by that combination. And that, you know, the immune system does evolve over time. And those T cells that might have caused this grade 3 uveitis were no longer present uh, upon retreatment. So how do we go from here? Uh, we've gone very quickly from uh, talking about the miracle of immunotherapy to, you know, the large number of patients that are no longer uh, treatable uh, that don't have good responses. And our, we've taken a number of approaches to that, obviously uh, looking at a number of um, uh, co-stimulators as well as negative regulators. And a number of years ago, we introduced an antibody lag-3 in the clinic, uh, last year, an antibody TIGIT, and these are negative regulators that can impact uh, anti-tumor uh, responses. Again, the conceptual framework from this really does come from the chronic virus infection field, where John Wary, among others, uh, defined this concept of T-cell exhaustion, and that progressive uh, T-cell exhaustion resulted in the increase of other negative regulators, uh, many of which uh, are not well studied. And the combination of these could actually show uh, benefit in chronic viral uh, treatment. Uh, we were able to show here, both for TIGIT and LAG3 as shown here, that while LAG3 has very poor activity in anti-tumor responses, there's really only one model that we've studied where we see a little bit of tumor growth inhibition. It can combine well with PD-1. So these are being tested in a number of indications. Uh, in the last remaining moments, though, I would like to discuss uh, uh, the possibilities for improving upon CTLA-4. And this is to try to deal with uh, perhaps the safety issues uh, related to CTLA-4 as well as perhaps improving the efficacy of the antibody such that we can dose at lower doses where clearly there are less toxic effects. And this approach, these two approaches, are to actually do what we did in the mouse, which is to make an antibody which binds better to FC receptors, where we might get increased Treg depletion at the tumor and can reduce the dosing. And the other approach is a proform of an antibody called a probody. That's a collaboration with Cytomics, uh, a small biotech company in the Bay Area, who have developed a masking technology, uh, selection of peptides that bind to the active site, which are linked to the light chain of an antibody with a cleavage site for uh, proteases that are specific 
to the tumor site. So this could lead to um, reduced uh, exposure to anti-CTLA-4 in the periphery and potentially to reduce toxicity. Again, these make certain assumptions. They're not mutually exclusive that CTLA-4 functions at the tumor or perhaps the draining lymph node. And again, uh, that antibody-mediated uh, adverse events are peripheral and that Treg depletion actually is uh, an important function uh, of, of this uh, next generation version. Uh, we've studied this by looking at transgenic mice that have uh, human FCRs in place of the mouse FCRs. And what you could see is that if you uh, take ipilimumab and you make a non-fucosylated version of it, it binds better to the two variants of CD16 than ipilimumab itself. And in this mouse model, a surrogate of ipilimumab, this sees anti-mouse CTLA-4 with human FC. The G1 doesn't have much activity, sort of what I showed you with the mouse antibodies. Uh, however, if you make antibodies that bind well to the FC receptors, you see good anti-tumor activity that's maintained uh, somewhat at lower doses. And as expected, these antibodies cause Treg depletion and effector T cell activation at the tumor site, but not in the periphery. With regard to the probody approach, uh, we selected uh, masking peptides that bind to the CDR3 region, and those show a, a loss of binding to CTLA4. And when we put those into mouse models, uh, again, there's some complexities here having to do with this is a mouse that has human CTLA-4, but mouse FC receptors. You can see that ipilimumab uh, causes good anti-tumor activity because it can bind to mouse FC activating receptors. And this probody form also has good anti-tumor activity. And what you can see here is that at the tumor site, both of these antibodies cause Treg depletion and CD4 effector cell activation. But when you look in the periphery, the pro form of the antibody does not cause Treg activation, a sign of CTLA-4 blockade in the periphery, uh, as measured by their number or KI67 or ICOS, another activation antigen that's on Treg. So it looks as if in this mouse model, uh, the probody can prevent the peripheral effects of CTLA-4. And we've been able to show this uh, in monkeys as well. Obviously, not a lot of time to go through this data. Um, so uh, what I want to end with is that uh, obviously the target uh, of, of your selection of antibody is important and uh, clearly CTLA-4 and PD-1 are superior targets. I don't think we uh, expected PD-1 to have the activity that it had, but we're obviously thankful that it does. Uh, but what's also important is the isotype, the FC region uh, that you choose, as well as the specific part of the antibody, uh, the CDR regions, and what part of the target that uh, they uh, recognize. And depending on the function of the target, one can make antibodies that are good agonists or good depleters, or in the case of PD-1, uh, things that do not uh, bind to FCR and are really pure blockers. So with that, uh, again, I'd like to thank the society for this award and uh, recognize uh, my longtime uh, collaborator, Nils Lomberg. Uh, Mark Selby has worked with me since 2001 on the PD-1 program with Chang-Yu Wang, Minhua Han. Uh, Ken Tudium worked on the PD-L1 antibodies. 
uh, Hai Chen Wang made the PD-1 uh, hybridoma, and Ed Hawk uh, made the uh, CTLA-4 hybridoma, and uh, John Engelhardt has led the work on the next generation CTLA-4 antibodies, and again, I'd like to recognize uh, work from Steve Almo and Cytomics, and uh, obviously the clinicians and, and patients who have brought these drugs to reality. So thank you again.